In rural Shropshire, close to the border with Wales, is hidden the most fascinating of historic homes. Today, I am at Pitchford Hall, and Pitchford is considered England's finest Elizabethan half-timbered house. It was actually lost by the family in 1992. However, they managed to get the house back 25 years later. This is an extraordinary story of heartbreak and stoic determination. Thank you very much. Cheers. You. With her husband James, Rowena Colthurst, whose mother inherited Pitchford in the early 1970s, has worked tirelessly to get the family home back. But now, they're faced with the enormous task of recovering the building from years of neglect. This is incredible. When I think of England, I think of green and houses that look just like this. Of course, it pulls at my heart because Hinchingbrook, we had to do the exact same thing. The house was sold in the 1950s and lost. This family, Rowena and James, managed to get their family home back, and I can't wait to find out how they did it. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. This is Edward. Hi, hey, Edward. Hi. Hi. So, and who's that? Doggy. Doggy. Love it. Um, <laughs> well, it's amazing to be here. Are you going to show me around as well? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh my goodness. At the heart of the house is the great hall, where Rowena vividly remembers her mother's presence and tells me how the house was lost to the family in 1992. We used to have a settle here where my mum used to love sitting. She'd be draped in cats, sitting there as close as possible to the fire. And that was basically a roaring of laughter, smoking lots of fags. I mean, absolutely outrageous. She was such a character. Oh my goodness. I so can you, picture her there right now. You can, that's amazing. So you obviously grew up here. And then in 1992, my parents um, just literally, it felt like overnight suddenly told me they had to sell Pitchford and my mum was the first person in the entire history of Pitchford since, you know, the medieval times to ever have to sell. And so it was absolutely disaster, but they were Lloyds of London victims, yes. both of them, same names in the disastrous syndicates. I mean, when I mean, it happened so fast, I couldn't believe it. Oh my goodness. So when they called you and told you, well, I mean, what did, do you remember that, that yeah, feeling? I, I remember it so well. I mean, James would tell you as well, I was sitting on the Rundo so in floods of tears. And the um, incredible thing was, my husband is just as passionate about Pitchford as I am. Obviously, I was lucky enough to grow up in this idyllic house. But he um, immediately is a very positive person. He took me to this old oak tree and we made a vow there and then that we'd try and do everything in our power to get the house back again. Oh my God! It took us 25 years of trying and trying and trying to get the house back. And here we are. And so. Here we are. Oh my gosh! Like, I mean, Rowena. You, so, I mean, to see Edward oh, and Serena and Georgiana growing up and having the wonderful opportunities so, that I used to have. Yes. That's what really moves me. And people have been unbelievably positive and it's such a story of hope and it's, it's been the most incredible experience. Oh my goodness, so you spent with James 25 years doing 
everything you could yes. to get this house back. In 1992, after valiant efforts to try to save Pitchford Hall for the nation, including debates in the Houses of Parliament, nothing could be done. And in September that year, the hall was sold. So there was the, um, all the contents had to be sold. So Christie's were kind of all over the place, like putting stickers on all our things. James and I were here taking stickers off. Meanwhile, my parents have completely distraught and have gone off to Mexico. I mean, it was just appalling. Oh my goodness, Rowena. The house got sold and I, in 1992, it was probably the worst possible time to sell a house given the sort of state of the economy and everything. They sold it uh, for under a million, like 700,000. I mean, yeah. nothing. They also had to pay back every penny we'd ever got for the roof, the 200,000 my dad had, you know, English Heritage gave us an amazing 80% grant for the roof, we had to pay that back. And then all the uh, contents got sold through Christie's. Through Christie's, and who bought it? So in the end, I, there were a few people who were interested, but the best option my mother thought was this Kuwaiti princess, because at least she had lots of money and she's talked a good game in terms of wanting to do lots of things to it. And, uh, and she was, of course, interested in the sale yard, but she really wanted to have loves horses, not houses, is my suspect, right. suspicion. Yeah. Right. So she was here really for the yeah. stables. She really wanted the stable yard because she had an Arabian stud farm, and that was the thing that was really important to her. So she didn't want the land. So we kept right. the estate. She had a ridiculous situation where we had all the estate, thousand acres or whatever, but minus the house. From the moment the house was sold in September 1992, Rowena and James vowed to somehow, one day, get the house back. I, I really hope my mum would be happy to see us oh, here today. Oh my gosh, she must be, you know, <laughs> jumping up and down for joy yeah. in, um, in greener pastures. I mean, that is, what a story that you got. I mean, I mean, but just the determination that you and James had mm. to get this back. Julie, Julie. Yes, yes. We're, we're on set. We need to. We need to film this. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Sorry, everybody. I was just on Aonia.com. You know, our co-production yeah, yeah. partner of yeah. American Viscountess, yeah. and they have just listed their online events for the next seven days. And I just want to figure out which one I'm going to do as I carefully come down. <laughs> I wouldn't come down this there. This hill. So can I just? Julie, it's digital. You can look at it later. <laughs> it's all on the app. That's true. I know the app is amazing. Do you, by the way, do you know, I know that obviously Aeonia, as we know, is the best online events in art and culture, but I didn't realize that they have historic houses and garden events that I can go to oh, online. Wow. Yeah, brilliant. Right. Right. Okay. Let's get this filmed. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll put this away. I'm going to bookmark it and come back to it later. How am I going to get down here, you guys? Pitchford traces its roots as far back as the Roman period, and you can really sense the layers of history here. Out on the estate, there's a special place where Pitchford derives its name. So basically, this is the kind of most incredible thing. There's a natural phenomenon of pitch, like black sticky bitumen, you won't yeah. believe this, seeping up through the ground, and that is why it's called Pitchford, because when I show you this incredible pitch well next to it's next to the forge and i was always told that it's a sacred place and that's why there's this incredible aura of goodness around pitchford oh my goodness here we go here's the this is the pitch well but it's so cool <gasps> so I, I still get excited by this every time and i've done this thousands this of times this is the pitch wow. basically <gasps> this yes yes you're gonna see look can okay. you see can you see there's so much of it there is don't you think this is crazy and yes. it's just and if you smell it, it you smells oil. Oil. Yeah. That's it's exactly right. Natural oil. And they think what? that. So there is a lot of Roman stuff around here because we have a Roman road going through the estate and we're part, you know, it's tributary of Watling Street. Right. And they think the Romans would have got so excited when they found this pitch that they might well have built a temple under the church. So we don't know for sure. So that's another thing to be discovered. Layers right. of history. Yes, and yes. And so there we are. <gasps> This, so this is, okay, this is the pitch well, but is the pitch everywhere or is it just, just here? Just here, just, just here. here. <gasps> just literally here, this, this is it. I'm always fascinated by how these houses um, have their names, the origins of them. 
And so the pitch there, yeah. Yeah. and then we're coming up to the Ford the here. The Ford, and then there's the Pitchford family who were here in the medieval times, and the Pitchford church was built by one of the Pitchfords, and they were crusaders. And the thing in the church, if we have time, there's a Pitchford who was a crusader carved out of a solid piece of oak, which is absolutely magical. So the, you know, the layers of history, the Pitchford medieval house is under the Tudor house. Is and there's a crown oh. post in the attic that I'll show you that proves that it's the medieval house that the Pitchford family used to live in. So right. we feel very much that they're an incredibly important part of the... Of course, mm -hmm. well, is of the story. So underneath the house that I see now, this Elizabethan half timbered house, underneath is the medieval. The medieval, the guts of the, you know, a proper kind of open fire, the classic medieval hall. Wonderful. Yeah. And then when exactly was the house that I'm seeing now, when was that built? Yeah, so my answer so there was a rich wool merchant called Thomas Otley. So in those days, they could make incredible fortunes yes. of wool, believe it or not. And he um, bought the house, in, the, the estate in 1473, um, but obviously didn't start building the house really until about 1549, I believe he started. Before heading back to the house, Edward challenges us to a game of poo sticks. Invented about 100 years ago by Winnie the Pooh in the famous stories by A. A. Milne. Take a stick, drop it into the water upstream at the same time as your opponent, and wait to see whose stick reaches the other side of the bridge first. Oh, Julie's an expert. Well, no, I'm not. The competitive intensity is coming out. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Ready? Here we go. One, three, two, two one. three. You have to be strategic. I know you have to. <gasps> oh, oh no! Edward's going to win. Edward's going to win. He's it. He, I knew that was coming. Oh he God. knows exactly where to place it. Edward, that was just <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> where is it? Ours just, ours oh, just landed just flat. Stranded. We're obviously not very <laughs> good at it. Oh, here it goes. There's it. There it is, Edward. Yay! Yay. Yay! Oh, it's so sweet. He did it. He did it. Well, that's brilliant. I actually wanted you to win, Edward. <laughs> so much fun. I'm quite competitive, so I'm very, very Mine's just upset stuck that you are. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Ours are forever cemented I think right that's here. It. Oh, so oh, oh, well. Um, Oops. It's okay. I've made my mark now. I won't give up the with day my, job. With my, with my boots. <laughs> I'm very excited to, uh, to show you. This is a door that we always used to use. I mean, obviously that's the front door where guests and things come if there's a right. party, but this is like the normal door. <gasps> that's my bedroom up there with the bars and windows. Oh, yes, yes. Just stop me falling out. So when you got the keys to the house, so this is 2016, yeah. September 28th, you, 25 years later, <laughs> you get the family house back. You work so hard, you buy it back. And is this the door you went through or was it, what happened? No, so this is the door. And basically, I, mean, I bet I was shaking so much that you can imagine that I couldn't get the key in the lock. And then I was like crying half with joy and half with laughter and half with, I don't know what emotions were going on. It was oh absolutely crazy. But I was like literally shaking. Oh, so here we go. Oh, so come on in. So this is... Oh my God! My usual front door. These are the stairs to my bedroom. This wonderful cantilever staircase where my mum kept all the millions of tins of cat food for our three cats. And so then, you walk in here. You get the keys. This is the very first room I went into. This is our old anti kitchen, and this is again where we used to have breakfast. But the first thing I saw was obviously the ceiling had collapsed, and that was like, oh my goodness. Part of me is I'm thinking. Um, having flashbacks because basically this is one of my favorite rooms. It had copper, beautiful copper pots and pans all around the room, all got sold at the Christie sale. We've no idea who bought those. Um, this incredible, um, you know, range, which is the, very similar to the one at Hampton Court. I don't know, there's so many different feelings, but the most ridiculous thing, and this is what really moved me, is there was a newspaper, my mum and dad's Telegraph newspaper from 1992 still sitting in, in here. It was just, just there. No. Time had stood still. No. It was insane. So you walk through here 
and you and there's this newspaper <gasps> and there's this newspaper 1992 oh just still no. sitting there it's just right. oh, yeah right. but just still sitting there hadn't moved just where my parents left it. Oh yes, here's the bell system there. I can see a bell to the west entrance, the back door, the hall, the dining room, the morning room, own bedroom, west hall, breakfast room, library, drawing room, <laughs> south entrance. You have this lovely bell system. We, we have so much more we could do. We just need more funds. You're right. So we're doing everything we can. So Edward, what are you playing with here? Oh, uh, the old oven. The old oven. This is my mum's very state-of-the-art oven. This is where we used to cook our bacon and eggs. My dad loved a proper British fry-up. My mum, by the way, was a terrible cook, but we were lucky enough to have someone to help in those days. <laughs> right, you know, exactly. <laughs> Boy, how times have changed. Look at this, it's so fun. It's brilliant. As we explore, what's clear is the enormous projects Rowena and James have on their hands. But by opening up part of the house as a holiday let, they hope to fund the repair and restoration of some of these rooms in the former servants' quarters, which hark back to a different era. Gardeners and butlers and right fish and yeah of and course any of course. number of incredible maids and, and wonderful people this was the um, luggage room to the left here just the entire room just dedicated to suitcases um, I am really embarrassed to say this used to be my kind of um, fun room and I ha I did actually I didn't know what possessed me to paint it this colour but it, <laughs> as a teenager I thought that was uh, the thing to do. So you painted this this bright red colour. Oh, no, How so old were you when you painted it? Oh, when I was about 13. <laughs> I thought it was super cool. I had my re record oh. player up here. Fantastic. So this was for you growing up. What did this room represent? Yeah, this is my own space to right. have, you know, my friends and just yeah. kind of do whatever I wanted up here. So, but was it nice to see, I guess, in one sense, when you came up after 25 years, at least the red was still the here. The red was still here, <laughs> I know, I know. The red colour. And then I also love this room for a different reason, because there, I was always told that there's this lovely little cubby hole with the window. And then my mum's psychic friend um, came and he said that there were these maids totally overexcited because they... I see that their master's coming home for Christmas. Right, wait, so these were the ghosts. I am always fascinated about ghosts because we do have one grey lady in the Tudor room at Mapperton, but how many ghosts do you think you have here? Good ghosts at, at Pitchford. So this will make you laugh. So my, this is a direct quote from my mum. She, she was told that the entire house was stuffed full of ghosts <laughs> and they were all very lovely ones. <laughs> and they were all very lovely ones. <laughs> that Edward, Edward was the ghost. I, I have smelt... Uh, so my step-grandfather smoked these incredibly pungent cigars or cigarillos. Um, from Latin America and so very often you get a whiff of the smoke so I've totally smelt that and that got really excited when I was 13 I smelt the smoke and then you go running off to tell someone because you're so excited by the time you come back nothing nothing right and right then, and then Edward uh, I was in the great hall when you saw well tell Julie what you saw well the first time I saw a ghost was when I was about four and like someone who was doing work on the house had like just left and then like, I saw this black figure and I was like I said hello to it and like, it just paused, looked at me and then like just carried on walking <gasps> outside of a door and it looked like Darth Vader. <laughs> and, and then he was a bit rude because he wasn't talking to you, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> For some reason like ghosts don't come when there's like more than like one person. I mean that's what they usually like to do. I mean they're walking around when like there's no one there because they know that like, no one's going to see them. Right, exactly. And then maybe they think of like children as won't get as scared, no. so they come out. Whereas adults can get, I think, yeah. a little. Yeah, I think you're right. It's a good theory. Quite shy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good theory. So, Edward, do you ever come up here and play a little bit of hide and seek? Or nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. Um, what do you think of the red color that your mommy painted when she was thirteen? Uh... <laughs> So a bit too red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what possessed me. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I thought it was so cool at the time. But where are we in the house? Obviously yeah. the servants, uh, used to be the servants' quarters, but not when you were growing up. Yes, it's really the Victorian wing. And the way I would best describe it is the classic Tudor part is an Elizabethan E-shaped house. And then they added a servants' wing on and it became an F-shaped 
So how many rooms in the house are there? Yeah, it's an excellent question. And I think it's partly a subjective answer, but I'd say maybe like 40 or 50 rooms, but um, now there's 52, because I discovered two more rooms, which I didn't even know about when we got the house back and went round with the children, because they obviously wanted to see every single room and explore every inch of Pitchford. Careful of the dodgy floorboards. I will be careful of the dodgy. Look at put these. Look at this. This is what we. I mean, this is like. This, you see this? We've got an insane amount of work to do. The ceiling. Yes, the ceiling everywhere. But there's something. I know it looks like the ceiling's about to collapse, but it's there's something rather beautiful about it. I completely agree. I mean, my um, <laughs> husband's nephew got married at Pitchford recently. The first wedding we'd had in, since the house had um, had come back. So in 25 years and Gabby, his beautiful wife, had wedding photos taken here and they looked fabulous. Yeah, it's very, I mean, you know, this is what people want. They want this sort of rustic, um, run down, shabby chic, shabby chic. <laughs> the ceiling's about to fall through, but no, but this obviously is a lot of work though when you want to. Yeah. No, I mean, it is a huge amount This is a massive work. amount of work. All right, so what room are we heading I'm to next? really, really want to show you this special room. So this is what well, I was always told. My mum was always fascinated by all the ghosts and everything. We always had lots of wonderful psychic people. And one, oh. so I was always told that this room in here is unbelievable. It's got the, the lady. I can feel it. <laughs> it's got a special, you always feel the kind I of can feel that. Energy. I feel, I'm, I haven't, I, I'm walking into the room now. It feels now. different, doesn't it? Oh my God, it I feel like everything's tingly. It makes I can feel, feel like, it. So Is this weird? It's so bizarre. So the lady who's in here was like the, <gasps> um, the, the head servant lady and she was just apparently this life force, incredible woman, power of positivity and she loved protecting the house and apparently there's an aura of goodness that protects the house oh, and, and this is this is this, you can actually feel you that can feel it. energy you can feel it and i love that the room is this pink color too because it's sort of a happy color well it is a happy color that looks fun this looks like an old fuse box here i heard the clicking and I had to look over. It's an old fuse box, obviously completely detached. That looks like a fun, fun project. I think that you can already tell, I've, already, you know, I've only been here for half a day and I can already feel the good energy, not just in this room, but all around, yeah. all around. You can feel it. And, the, and uh, my great aunt taught me to do water divining and there's just so many incredible things that happen yeah. in Pitchford. In and people just feel alive and happy. I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of our American Viscountess patrons. Without the support of our patrons, we would not be able to make these wonderful historic house episodes that's really bringing history to life. If you are interested in becoming an American Viscountess patron, do check out patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll get early access to all of the episodes, plus a lot of other behind the scenes content, goodies, and in particular, if you do like that 1957 convertible Corvette that you see me in, you get a signed photo of that as well. So do check out becoming a part of our American Viscountess community at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. I'm just about to meet Rowena and James, and it's a beautiful day. I can see that they're waiting for me there. Oh, they're so lovely. They have some wine waiting for me. We're meeting at the Orangery, which is one of the first buildings James and Rowena restored when they returned to Pitchford. Can I first, I'm gonna do lots of these, so I'm gonna do one right now because I feel really honored to be here, um, I have to say. And just, your story is, I mean, it's one of a kind, remarkable story. And it really sort of tears at your heart when, you know, not when I was walking around with you today. Yeah. And just, I think we can hardly believe it ourselves. Yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, do you sure. still feel sort of five years on? We do, we do. You still kind of pinch yourself at times and think, look, you know, it's, it's been five years. But that, you know, I think it's really important to have that sense of excitement and, and keep on having that sense of excitement, 
if we ever take Pitchford for granted, that, that is a complete disaster. So yes, but you do now and again have to remind yourself of, of that initial kind of excitement yeah. when Rowena walked through the door uh, and, and, you know, after yeah. 25 years. Yeah. You made this pact. You were going to do everything you can to get Pitchford back. Mm. And those 25 years, can you just talk me through really the ups and the downs of it and did you did you really feel you could do it no i i i think there were there were absolute times when we thought we can do this and at absolute times when we thought it's never gonna, it just <laughs> not never gonna hope. happen not, not open hell um so it, look, it went in kind of waves with sometimes we felt kind of confident there were things that were happened right. sometimes we'd hear kind of gossip from you know let's say the village or something and it looked like it, it, it was possible right. and other times yeah we just thought it's never going to happen and yep. we, we should forget this kind of dream but we never quite did. did yeah we always knew this day was a brilliant platform to kind of launch uh, you know potentially a bid for the for the hall so we spent those 20 25 years building up the state doing up derelict uh buildings farm buildings and turning them into kind of holiday cottages yes trying to make you know essentially the funding that would then make uh, going for the hall kind of possible so yeah, we did. We, we spent 20, 25 years just yes. building on that position. Right. Uh, and then, then it eventually happened. Yeah, yeah and, and working full time, both of you. Oh no, yeah. that was a very, very really important part of it. <laughs> yes. We spent most weekends out here and what was absolutely brilliant is though we, so many of our friends were part of that hope. So they'd come up, we'd have, we'd start off with the lodge. My mum let James and I have the lodge as our weekend thing. And then we eventually turned that into a holiday let. That was the very first commercial thing when my, um, you know, after my parents and everything. But the, um, the, the joy of the friends willing us on is what I was thinking about, the impetus and yes. everyone rooting for us, yes. basically, which was really special. Yeah, no, I mean, the, I mean, again, it's the most remarkable, you know, story of saving and getting back the, the lost family home. Well, cheers to both of you because this is just the start. I can feel that. And I cannot wait to explore more and yeah. see what you both have done. Oh, yeah, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. To hear James and Rowena talk about the 25 years that they took and worked towards getting the family house back is inspiring in itself. But now they're on this different journey and it's about getting the treasures back, but also making sure that this survives for generations to come. The amount of work that they both are committed to do is incredible. And to get those treasures back, and really we're looking at it right here, what they have done to save this historic house is, it will be talked about for years and years to come. Mm -hmm.